most haunting images of day four of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Now, the Russian army, we are told, is on the outskirts of Ukraine's capital, Kiev, but infighting and, and fighting continues within the city. There is, of course, uh, fighting that's happening in Kharkiv, the second largest city. But take a look at image number one. Russian troops enter Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, amidst heavy shelling. Ukraine has claimed that Russian forces blew up a gas pipeline in the city, prompting the government to warn people to protect themselves from smoke by covering their windows with damp cloth or cotton gaze. Ukraine continues to fight. Another haunting image on your screen is the image that shows Ukraine's armed forces destroying the enemy's war weapons. A tank, a Russian tank was caught in a, has caught tank after massive fire in shelling. What? Visuals on your screen now show you the aftermath of the Kharkiv siege. Heavy shelling took place in the second largest city of Ukraine. Russian army light vehicles breached Kharkiv, including the city center. Several light armored vehicles have been smashed by Ukrainian soldiers. The next haunting image comes from... Chernihiv region in North Ukraine and this shows the valor of the local people with the local police people in that area stopped a convoy of Russian tanks residents were seen lining up on the road making a human chain a wall of sorts to prevent the Russian tanks from moving forward <laughs> Amid heavy shelling in the capital, Kiev, visuals on your screen now show you an oil tank, how this was caught in a massive exchange of fire. Now there is this ongoing attack in a, in a suburb barely 30 kilometers from the capital, Kiev. This, there was an airstrike and a nine-story residential building was hit by this airstrike, the casualties remain unknown. Russia mounts its offensive on Ukraine. A car was caught in this crossfire. A car was seen, smoke coming out of the car, and this in central Kiev. Um, it, it looks like Look, they are ready with weapons and they are ready and to defend in a show of strength several residents of Ukraine have taken up arms and weapons they've joined the fight against Russia yes they are ready to fight you see there the crossfire between Ukraine and Russia and Donetsk continues with shelling in Donetsk uh, this is um, in the Mariupol region in Ukraine. Several houses were damaged, several civilians injured. <laughs> Anastasia Lena, a former Miss Grand Ukraine, she's put down her, gra her crown, her stash, and she's now defending her country. She's posted pictures on her Instagram account. Anastasia said, and I quote, Everyone who crosses the Ukrainian border with the intent to invade will be killed. I now want to get you the biggest story that's now coming from the second largest city of Ukraine. We are in Kiev, we are in the capital. There is uh, occasionally you hear an explosion go off uh, and not far from where we are, where a number of uh, people now, civilians, uh, they have assembled to join the security forces. There are also combat veterans uh, wearing their old uniform. They have come here. But in Kharkiv, there are pitched battles going on on the streets of the city. Now, this is uh, the second largest city with a population of 1.5 million people. And in this city, there is a very intense gunfight on from both sides. Now, the city is being defended by the people, but reports that seem to come in are indicating that people, the Russian army is finally, it's been able to breach 
the security and they are now fighting back. Russian army's light vehicles have breached Kharkiv city. They are very close to the city center. Several light armored vehicles have been smashed by Ukrainian soldiers. Ukrainian forces are also destroying the enemy war weapons. Of course, civilians are being asked to remain indoors and not venture out. Videos posted on Ukrainian media and social networks show Russian vehicles moving across Kharkiv in an armored light vehicle burning on the street. Ukraine has claimed that the Russian forces blew up a gas pipeline in the city, prompting the government to warn people to protect themselves from smoke. And Ukrainian people are now fighting back and in numbers. It's not just a member of parliament who may pick up a weapon or a former Miss Ukraine who's picked up weapon, but the common man and woman on the street, they too are now coming forward to pick up weapons to defend their country. And if they don't have weapons, they're forming a human chain. Like this report that we show you of a human chain being formed when Russian tanks were advancing from the north, uh, from the Belarus uh, side, villagers, townspeople and the local police, they formed a human chain across the road in an attempt to stall the advance of the Russians, asking them to go back and not invade another country. Uh, actually, I don't know. They are like not far away from Kiev, but there are some terrorists, small groups of terrorists here, like uh, special forces of Russia. Special forces. But uh, yeah, all of them are killed, you know, because like uh, here are a lot of people with weapons and everybody want to fight. So I, I, I think and I'm sure that they have no chances in Kiev. Yes. Uh, yeah, sure. A lot of women too. They have weapons and uh, they will fight. It's you know, it's it's about our country. It's about our land. It, it, it's very serious. If we, uh, we we won't lose because if we will lose, the, uh, here will be Russia and everybody hates Russia here. I don't know. I, I... No, no, no. Okay. Sorry, I have no time now. He is busy. Weapon. He has. Uh, can you can use your rifle, please? Rifle, Adi. Rifle. If they have weapon. Look, their magazines are loaded. Can... <laughs> Uh, can I just show the, the magazine, please? The, look, the magazines are loaded. Can you see the two magazines on the gun here? On the Kalishmi, the two magazines. They're loaded, fully loaded magazines. Uh, they are fully loaded magazines. Look here. They are fully loaded, okay? And they are ready. They are on stand two, and they are ready to take any eventuality. Anything else from here? Then probably put me on, on Hindi so that I can do it right now. Otherwise, I'll have to go from here. Thank you, Shiv. Thank you. And I think it's a great moment. I think no other channel in the world could show something like this. And what's the situation on ground? We get you reality of a recruitment camp. This is how youngsters and veterans are coming together to join the Ukrainian defense. There are men, there are women, there are some youngsters who are college graduates. They're coming. Uh, I'll speak to Alex. There are some other veterans on this side. We'll speak to them. Alex, what more can you tell us about the recruitment initiative that's on here? Uh, there are, there are, uh, they accepting everyone who just wants to help and who's uh, older than 18 years old uh, because Every, everyone wants to join. Everyone wants to do their part to help fight Russia. But the fact remains, I mean, what kind of training would these people have? Yes, the combat veterans who are on this side, they've fired weapons, they've used some of these weapons, uh, you know, they would know how to fight. But what about, uh, you know, that lady, for instance, or those youngsters, those college students, for instance, they're, they have no training. Yeah, yeah, they're just going going there to protect their country. They're how? I mean, there'll be battle-hardened Russian soldiers on the other side. 
and these children, even if you give them assault rifles, how will they defend? Uh, well, they are not uh, being sent off to the uh, to the front lines like this. No, uh, this this is the job for uh, Ukrainian army. But they they are doing everything they can. They are like catching uh, catching. Uh, like stopping diversions, yeah. uh, uh, catching um, like foreign uh, foreign agents who came here. Uh, That's a very important point you make, and for the benefit of our viewers, there is a real threat. There is an apprehension that foreign agents or uh, Russian spies, as they put it, uh, they are they may have infiltrated the city and they may be guiding artillery fire. They may be guiding enemy, uh, as they put it, uh, uh, fire into uh, onto their uh, vital assets and vital points. And that is why the civilian help is being sought in catching those people uh, and handing them over to the police. And that is why we noticed, Alex, since early this morning, very heavy frisking of people, very heavy checking including yeah. us uh, including ours oh yeah yeah the, <laughs> that that was really fun we uh can i can i tell the story sure but uh, you know frankly it wasn't fun <laughs> <laughs> No, I got uh, I got the gun pointed at me uh, for the first time in my life, so <laughs> that's an experience. We were stopped uh, walking walking on the street uh, because we were approaching uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, Ministry uh, of Defense, and uh, there were soldiers. Uh, they pointed gun at, uh, guns at us. They started asking asking like who who we are, what are we doing. I explained the situation that you need to get uh, to get the pass uh, to. Uh, move around the city and uh, they they eventually just let us go they did they did and thank you for that uh, the fact that uh, you know Alex speaks uh, he's Ukrainian he speaks uh, the language very fluently uh, you know cameraman camera person Pavan Kumar and I we wouldn't uh, have known why were guns being pointed at us we had absolutely no idea suddenly there were people who were speaking in 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 a harsh tone no doubt it's a combat zone and you had a weapon pointed straight at at you um, and and a cocked weapon at that. Yes, I mean, it was yes, a cocked yes. weapon. Yes, yes, They they uh, they pointed and one of them cock, uh, cocked the gun. So yeah. So that is how real the threat is. That is how real uh, this situation is. But combat veterans here resolute in in their commitment that they will defend their country.